Welcome to uh, the Hard Surfaces seminar program. Um, my, I'm Joe Simpson. I'd like to introduce the first speaker, uh, who is Ryan Fazan. Ryan has a unique perspective on the, the tiling market because he's worked both as a contractor, as a dis distributor, and as a uh, creative director for a tile company. But for the last decade, he's been the consultant for Tile of Spain and he's going to introduce the global tile trends that are playing across the international tile market. So, Ryan, far away. So thank you, Joe. Thank you, QMJ and, and the Hard Surfaces Show for having me here. Um, as Joe said, <clears throat> I basically was born under a kiln. I started working in the tile industry at 13 and uh, I've done just about everything I possibly could in this industry. And uh, I, I try to give a bit of a unique perspective on trends. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of walk our way through what are the macro trends that are affecting the building industry right now and how they specifically apply to tile and how tile can really be uh, a leader in, in shifting where we're going and what our philosophy is in the built environment. And, and why now is the most exciting time to be in this industry. So today we're talking mostly floor trends, tomorrow we're gonna to be getting into wall tile, and Thursday we're transitioning into exterior environments as well. So each session is just a little bit different. We're gonna start all of them off with kind of the macro trends, and I'm gonna just shift them a little bit to speak to each of the major themes. And as we see in, in this wonderful stand by Material District Expo, uh, right behind us. Right now, top of mind for just about everyone in just about every industry is um, is how sustainability factors into the decisions we're making. And, and that has never been more true in the built environment as it is today. And, and I love this quote by the late John Paul II that unless we take a look at our lifestyle, we're not going to solve this ecological problem that we have going on today what this industry is really focusing on right now is changing the connotation of what it means to place our footprint on the world. Up until today, when mankind stepped into an environment, nine times out of 10, we left it worse off than, than when it, we'd never been there. And we're really working on changing that footprint from something that is a negative connotation to actually becoming a net positive. And I think ceramics specifically have a way to lead that charge um, and, and change the connotation of footprint to a net positive. What I'm seeing, when I start doing trend research, I look at literally everything that isn't architecture and design first. And you start to see these macro trends because trends develop as what we're exposed to each and every day of our lives in every field and they start to cross pollinate. And what I started seeing in every industry from tourism to agriculture, to travel, to, uh, to things like entertainment is, is we're starting to see a word being tacked on at, 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 as a forethought and that's regenerative. We're looking at ways to, to change our perspective into a net positive and that makes a big difference for us in the ceramic industry because what everyone's looking for today is transparency. The through line is business models are starting to shift from a profit first mentality to more what our, our medical professionals look at, which is like the Hippocratic Oath. First, we do no harm. And, and that's kind of where our, our business models are shifting to. When we start to see a lot of small businesses, that's what's being the through line. That's their marketing message. That's actually built into the DNA of smaller companies. And it's, it's transitioning to larger organizations as that becomes more and more of a macro trend because trust really is becoming the most valuable commodity, even more valuable than time in our time-starved uh, lifestyles today. Because if there is a face of the 2020s, it's this face. It's, oh yeah, prove it. That's why transparency is becoming so important. And that's why I say ceramics as an industry have the capability to really lead the charge uh, in shifting our mentality in the, in the built environment. North America has a site called Y Tile. That's a great educational site 
uh, developed by the TCNA that tells a lot of different stories uh, throughout the uh, industry because ceramics really have that message of simple transparency because it's responsibility through embodiment. And that transparency gets so easy to, to transmit to people because of the huge history that we have in this industry. Almost everything we know about past civilizations is only because of the ceramic material that we've been able to recover. Carbon dating is only able to be done on ceramic material. So when we look at 4,000 years of history from ancient Egypt to ancient, ancient uh, Assyria and the, the Ishtar Gate and the faience glazes in, in ancient pharaoh tombs, what we have today in terms of capability, and this is why it's so exciting to be in this industry, is we can actually re reproduce those beautiful tones of that ancient tile in, in one of the most realistic ways that not only you can see, but you can touch and feel those uh, ancient patinas because tile really is one of the best versions of biomimicry that we have today. Is everyone familiar with the term biomimicry? So biomimicry is looking at the way nature does something and reproducing that in uh, using modern technology and science to create the same effect. Basically ceramic tile is humankind recreating what happens in the Earth's crust when the Earth is making natural stone like we have around us here in the hall today. And in 4,000 years of history, we've not found a better recipe to create ceramic material other than these four simple ingredients. Simple, plasticized, moldable clays mixed with one of the most plentiful minerals on the planet, feldspar, and uh, mineral oxides and silicates, one of the other most plentiful minerals on the planet, exposing all of those to pressure and heat, which is what happens in the Earth's crust, and fusing them together to create a man-made stone, which is ceramic material. So what it takes today to really create a connection with today's consumer is something uh, that is, is a term, there's a podcast and a book and a TED talk by a great speaker named Jocko Willink, and his whole premise is extreme ownership. He's a, a Navy SEAL commander and trainer, and extreme ownership is what he bases his entire philosophy on, and that's really how to make a connection with clients today, is by telling a truthful story, standing up behind that truthful story, and having that extreme ownership. And that's transparency without qualification. And in terms of industries and manufacturing, ceramic tile has the capability of doing that in such a refreshing way because ceramics are uniquely suited to lead by example in the building industry because we're inert during, throughout, and at the end of the lifespan. It's 100% natural materials input and output after their useful life and inherently promote the, the health of occupants. Now, here in, in the UK and Europe, there's, there's a lot of focus on transitioning industry to carbon neutral and, and a much more positive uh, way of manufacturing. In Spain, they've got the roadmap to 2050, and they started on benchmarks in the industry in 1990, which already reduced the emissions and the carbon uh, footprint of the industry by 50% at that point. Now, they're talking about a 55% reduction from those benchmarks in 1990 by the year 2050. And I'll show you a couple of things that they're doing that, that are allowing them to get there. But first I wanna talk a little bit about the capabilities that are shifting and allowing us to, uh, to interpret some of the macro trends today. And it really is an exciting time to be in trends in tile because of what is happening technologically and allowing us to do one of the first things that's really important to understand is trends. We, when we talk about color trends and things like that, they're, they're actually very quick. We look at Pantone Color Institute and the paint industries, and they come out with a color of the year every single year. In tile, our, our product is used for 40, 50, sometimes 100 years. So our understanding of a lot of these quick trends is, is taking the through line and riding that wave and trying to pick the complementary tones that are gonna to apply 
for the next decade or more. And so instead of Pantone's color of the year last year being, you know, this magenta, we're not necessarily doing the magenta. We're looking at all of these complementary tones that are a bit more timeless that are going to make those flash in the pan colors and patterns look a lot better throughout the next decade. Because what ceramics look at in terms of design is a symbiosis with design, not necessarily domination. Uh, and being that through line, that constant through line throughout a built environment. So first I want to talk a little bit about the technical character or improvements that we have in our industry as product developers that are allowing us to get to looks and feels like this uh, reproduction of, a, of a, a beautifully worked natural stone. And what it's, what the, the vast majority of the industry is revolving around is our ability to digitally decorate and manipulate the surface. And I don't call it inkjet, although it is inkjet. Inkjet kind of brings to mind desktop publishing and four color process printing, which today in ceramics, I want, to, I want everyone to understand that we're so far beyond just the color spectrum. When uh, inkjet printing or digital decoration of ceramics came out in the year 2000 at Tevisama, we did have four color bars. It was a little bit different than CMYK that we use in desktop publishing. We had slightly different pigments. They were all mineral oxides, just like we have in our glazes, but it was four colors. About a decade later, we started to refine those colors. We started to realize that we needed a wider array and we added white inks and gray inks and some other colors to our, let's call it CMYK background. And it gave us a broader range of color to work with. Five years later than that, we could add one finish. So we were printing glossy and matte inks on top of the colors and we could slightly manipulate the surface. Fast forward to today where now we have up to 12 bars that we're working with and almost, almost six of those bars are different effects. We can add volume today. We can remove volume from the surface. We can print in different, different inks and even do non-metal metallics that are useful on floors. And that's what we'll start seeing as we get through. So this is a really good illustration of what it takes as a designer to work in different color spaces. When we're doing desktop publishing, that's our smallest array here, CMYK. So our smallest version of the vis visual spectrum is CMYK. As we get into sRGB, that gets, that's the spectrum that we have in our high definition screens. Then we get into Adobe RGB, and that gives us our broadest spectrum. But what we have totally is the whole three-dimensional curve there. That's actually three-dimensional color space. And in order to apply all of that, that's when we start manipulating finish. And that's what the power of digital decoration in ceramics is giving us today. Here's a really good illustration of that. This is a really simple picture of a landscape. We know there's blue water, there's sandy color, and then there's greens. But as we zoom in more and more and pixelate that image, you start to see how much variance there actually is within those blue tones, those gray tones and sandy tones. And that's because of the reflectivity of those surfaces light hitting them and bouncing back into our eyes and our eyes reading them. That's the amount of color variance that nature has. And that's what we're able to get to today in ceramics. But the other thing that's really important, and you'll see as you talk to the ceramic manufacturers around the fair, what we're able to do in beyond the surface is manipulate the the thickness of our tile, whether it's porcelain or ceramic body, we can shrink the thicknesses down or grow them larger to create the perfect te technical solution for exactly where we want our materials used. There's solutions around this, sh this show that go from 2 cm thick down to 4 millimeters thick because they're able uh, to be used in multiple different applications. And the industry is narrowly defining their products to be able to give solutions that don't over specify and, and over build in extra cost that allow for tile to be used in much more, much more prolific areas like worktops, like furniture, like veneer cladding, uh, even in, in cabinetry and millwork as well. So there's so many areas outside of traditional floors and walls uh, that, that we can use ceramics in. Now this is kind of the last thing in technical that I really wanted 
to kind of bring to the fore because one of the only things that that people can say is a real drawback of ceramics is the high embodied carbon because of the natural gas used in in a lot of the firing now there's really exciting work there's a lot of small format manufacturers that are that are moving some of their production to electric kilns a lot of them with uh, on-site renewable natural resources there's actually a, a think tank in Spain called ITC that partners with one of the best graduate study ceramic engineering programs in the world. Uh, and they've actually developed a, a hydrogen burning uh, program that, that they successfully fired ceramics utilizing hydrogen fuel as a fuel source just last year. So it's about uh, 14 months ago now, they fired the first ceramics utilizing hydrogen. And what they're doing is they're actually in a, a really smart development. They're working on a blended fuel source. So in order to give the hydrogen industry time to be able to supply vast amounts of hydrogen, as well as the ceramic industry time to, to do the switch over, they're doing a bit blended fuel source. So they're working with traditional natural gas blended with hydrogen to give the industry time to do that shift and allow for a much more uh, a carbon neutral firing process, which is one of the biggest criticisms of, of ceramics is the high embodied carbon in terms of the firing. So enough about science and, and uh, everything technical, let's get into aesthetics and floor tile and where our industry is shifting and what we're doing in terms of uh, utilizing all of those capabilities. Now, this is a, a great slide that I utilize a lot in my trend presentations because this is kind of how everything I've just talked about, all the technology builds into the aesthetics. When we're looking at trends, we have a goal. In the, the case of this slide, the goal is lighting up a room. How we do that depends on the technology at our disposal. In each and every one of these technological cases, we are still lighting up the room. The quality of the light, the amount of energy that's used, and all of those things are determined by the technology at our disposal. And where we're at today in ceramics is that this smart light bulb at the end with unlimited capabilities at our disposal, the highest efficiency, and the lowest cost for our end consumer. And I want to show you some of the ways that we're doing that today. But macro trends kind of build on each other and especially in a long view industry like ceramics, they shift very gradually. And if we look at <clears throat> what's happened since 2019 and where our trends have gone, all of these trends are still relevant. And we're just building on them gradually and we're still creating better and better versions of each and every one of these trends and all of them are relevant and important to our consumers today as they were in 2019 when they started sort of developing and maturing. And I'm going to go through some of the big ones right now and we're going to see um, sort of how our industry is interpreting them. Everyone familiar with the term biophilia? It's something that we're seeing in, in design literature over and over over the past a uh, few years, as we got trapped inside, we started to realize just how important our connection to the natural environment was and our living in relationship and symbiosis with it. And so biophilia is creating a reflection, a similarity or a resonance with the natural world that's bringing it into our spaces. Uh, and sometimes like uh, a vegetative print that we have there, or sometimes it's just in color and, and I've got a great slide for that. But there's all kinds of ways we can do that. If we're doing it in monochrome, we're utilizing texture and, and bringing in natural textures and motifs that we're using monochrome and light and shadow to create uh, a biophilic resonance within a single color. We're seeing a lot of tonal echo as well, where we've got an overall stone or metal or something look but it's got a vegetative or floral print that's slightly overlaid on it. And we're just seeing hints of that natural vegetation come in. We're seeing a lot of layers, uh, layered effects because we can print in volume and finish now. We've got the overall tone of something. We're adding metallics, we're adding 
one millimeter of volume, we're subtracting one millimeter of volume, doing that digitally so that we can manipulate the surface of our tile. Here's our contextual, and we see this a lot in our floor tile programs and a lot of our porcelains. If you look at that green wall there and all of those rust tones, all of those greens uh, and blues that are in that natural vegetative wall, and then look at the amount of color that's going on in the background of this uh, of this decorative concrete look on the worktop, on the back wall, all of those tones are built in to uh, the melody, the harmony in behind the overall cement effect. And that's what we're seeing a lot of our porcelain manufacturers do. Instead of ne printing necessarily like a floral print or a vegetative print on top, they're creating that residence, that biophilic residence in, in all of the different colors that are going on in the background of a lot of our programs. So we start to see blues and greens and rust tones and a lot of these natural colors come into our floor tile programs. The other thing that we see in uh, a lot of our, our programs today is sort of, it's, it's, it almost seems like the same thing, but it's a little bit more subtle. This, this feeling of organic, natural, raw, unworked forms, letting materials speak for who they are as, as themselves. We're, we're reproducing literally everything in tile, and it's not just the visual aesthetic, it's the, it's the character, it's the soul, and it's the structure of it that begs you to walk up and touch it. Because of our ability to create organic structure digitally, we're not just pressing it in the mold. Where we're constrained, when we're pressing something in a mold, maybe we have one or two different impressions that we can make uh, in, a, in a tile program. If we're pressing 60 by 120, Usually it's just one. So that, that kind of organic spontaneity, we couldn't get until we could decorate the surface digitally and actually manipulate that surface structure. This kind of sandblasted or flame natural structure was absolutely impossible two years ago in this industry. And what we can do is create this added depth with texture, whether it's an undulated surface or a flat surface, we're actually creating that structure digitally with our with our programs today again it's, it's bringing authenticity over embellishment to our clients today what ceramics are are being able to provide and it's something my dad's an architect my mom was an interior designer and i used to have arguments with them all the time and they would say i'm never going to specify a ceramic wood i'm never going to specify a ceramic stone if i want those materials i'm going to use the real thing but today, there's no difference in terms of look, touch, feel, and spontaneity between a ceramic rendition and the real thing. All that, that's different is, is the performance uh, and the amount of environmental impact in terms of um, harvesting raw material. Uh, at the authenticity is there, and we're really focused on that in this industry over embellishment. And because ceramic really is just baked dirt, we're seeing this huge rise in natural raw earth, natural terracottas, the, the unembellished feel of raw, pure ceramic material. Because we can do digital manipulations, both in patina, in finish, and in color, we're able to reproduce natural terracottas, natural raw worked uh, earth, in something that would normally be, let's say a wood fire tunnel kiln that would fire for about a week and all of that beautiful spontaneity. We can do that in a rapid fire 45 minute uh, tunnel kiln process today and, and get all of that uh, natural patina and, and spontaneity that we have in our ancient classic ceramics that are done handmade. Here's another thing, and again, this is harkening back to a lot of our classic ceramics that were done by hand, long fired, often very, very expensive. That V3 uh, large scale variation that depends on how close the ceramics are to the heat source in our smaller kilns. Getting that broad variation is something we can do very reliably today because we're digitally manipulating the, the overall 
uh, glaze, we can add little hints of digital decoration to a colored glaze and create that realistic organic V3 variation. Here's again something from wall tile that we're getting into. But we're looking at adaptive uses and contingencies for our clients today. I call ceramic the one and only contingency agnostic material we can put into our buildings and I've got a couple slides to show you why. Here's something that our industry is really focused on is illusory installs, creating ways for our tile fixers to create beautiful, bespoke, almost hand done tessellations. All of these are single piece tile installations that look like a hand tessellation, uh, a hand done uh, one by one mosaic. And a lot of that is because of a lot of the ancillary products that we've got at our disposal today for installers that give us the ability to regularly keep our planarity, keep our joint width consistent for large spans. So our manufacturers are able to create very, very tight um, programs that get, that we can grout uh, and look like a, a, a hand done mosaic or very, very expensive product. In, in a much easier way that's keeping our installation costs down. This one, if you wanna see this, this is very, very cool. It's on Thursday's presentation. Uh, this one's also in Thursday's, but it speaks to floor tile as well. And this is one area, I don't know here, but in North America, a lot of market share has been taken away from ceramics in uh, vinyl plank and, and vinyl tile. And we're starting to see that shift coming back to ceramics in a big, big way because the transition from inside to outside is so important for clients today. Exterior spaces, exterior kitchens and living rooms are so important for clients today. Even in commercial environments, the transition from inside to outside for a restaurant patio, for a pub, for an office space even, is very, very important for clients today. And ceramics are one of the only things that can transition from inside to out seamlessly with our adaptive glazes that we're doing. Everyone familiar with uh, in-out glazes or all over glazes, there's all kinds of different ways to that, that manufacturers kind of create their own marketing term for it. But basically, it's a smooth glaze that's very easy to clean that actually, if you look at it under a microscope, it's got very jagged texture, but it feels smooth to the touch. It's easy on bare feet. It's very easy to clean, but the way that jagged texture interacts with water, it's actually more slip resistant when it's wet. So it's a simple glaze that can go inside, transition seamlessly in a 2CM to outside uh, that, that makes a very easy installation. Uh, and that transition where you've got these wide banks of windows and transitioning from inside to outside floor is very, very simple. Here's another way that we're manipulating uh, and augmenting reality digitally. All of these, the metallic, this is a sinking ink uh, in Spanish is camaleonte that, that actually drops down into the body of the tile and creates the natural structure uh, and variation of that natural stone. The previous one, if I go back there, um, that's the vein structure and a metallic vein in a very, very rare marble where we're printing a metallic ink. Actually, we're just printing a gray ink with a, with a glossy vein on top of it. So this is fine on floors. Unlike most metallics, this one's actually fine on floors because it looks metallic, but it's not. Uh, and that's the level of sophistication that we can get to in our digital glazes today. Here's a slide that, that really epitomizes contingency agnosticism. This, everything that you see here from the pavers outside to the floor, to that huge monolith in Chepo de Grey, to uh, the Bernini marble on that countertop, all of that is uh, uh, a lamina style porcelain slab. So this is a client where they've, they want a w delicate white Bernini marble. They, they also want an 11 foot island where you could never get that material in that format. Uh, we're able to do it in porcelain. You can spill a glass of wine on that. You can flambe right on that countertop. You can take a screaming hot cast iron pan and drop it on the countertop. Same thing in the Chepo de Grey. The Chepo de Grey in the outside would never survive in that patio as a paver environment. 
because it has way too much porosity. So being able to recreate and faithfully reproduce all the characteristics from look to touch and feel with all the high performance of a porcelain floor tile is why we recreate other materials in porcelain. So our last one and one of my favorites in this industry is looking back with our rose colored glasses to some of the most creative periods in design and all of them have had expressions in ceramics. So we're looking back at all of the beauty in our uh, in our ceramics to create new versions that are time, you know, timeless representations of different periods of design. We started to see terrazzo in a lot of our commercial environments, and we're starting to see a lot of residential solutions in terrazzo that are so beautiful and bringing sort of this commercial new life to a, a usually commercially uh, viable program. Now this is a beautiful designer that named Francisco Sagara that does uh, a partnership with with a factory in Spain and creates ceramic material. This is one of his versions of a terrazzo, and it kind of speaks to the the Middle Ages modern or castle core kind of trend that's coming in, and a lot of the handmade furniture that we're seeing. We're seeing a lot of these handmade materials. Uh, come into our, our focus as well. We're taking a broad range in terms of what's the inspiration for our material. In this case, this is a very famous watercolor painter uh, that's utilizing, they're utilizing all of the tones and the expression from this watercolor painter and all of the colors and then encapsulating them in glaze and then sort of rolling them into a mid-century modern or art deco form. What I love about ceramic engineering today is that we're taking a very intelligent approach to leveraging this broad range of capabilities that we have. We're not throwing the kitchen sink at every program. In this case, we're just creating a simple stonalized texture and look, it, it looks like it's just been misted with water, but it's freeze framed in that way. We've got that structure of water. We've got the reflectivity of water on that surface. We're not going crazy and throwing everything that we can do at our programs. We're just creating little ways to, uh, to look at the past, take, uh, take inspiration from the past, and then shape the future in new ways with all of this capability. Because ceramics kind of give the ability to create whatever our client's idea, perfect idea of forever is, taking one space and giving limitless options in multiple different um, different ways of expression, different color tones, and different materials that we can use to create our, our client's idea of forever. Because when we're working with a material that is 100% natural, that will last beyond generations for our clients, design today is really kind of equaling benevolence for our clients. The, the more benevolent we can be, to our fellow humans and to the world we share it with, uh, the better off we are. And that's why I say ceramics kind of give us the ability to springboard into a new paradigm of design. So I hope I've given you guys some food for thought and thank you very much.